The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. May I ask you this? What is your money problem? Do you lie awake nights worrying about what will happen to you in your old age? Or how to assure your children of a good education? Or what your wife and youngsters will be faced with if something happened to you? Well, if you make an average income, you'll be surprised how simple it may be to solve these money problems. To start the ball rolling, pick up your phone and call one of your neighbors. He's your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now... In about 14 minutes, I want to tell you more about this helpful, friendly neighbor of yours and how he may be able to help you, as he has helped others, enjoy the many advantages that come with membership in the Equitable Society. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Armed Robbery. It's titled, The Wayward Brother. The majority of American citizens are souvenir hunters. These people enjoy bringing home a relic or some remembrance of a place visited. Shells from a beach, bark from a tree, souvenir ashtrays from established restaurants. And so it is with our men and women in the armed forces. Returning veterans often bring home enemy flags, enemy helmets, and, as happened in tonight's story, enemy weapons. Our case tonight emphasizes the dangers of bringing such weapons into this country. A serious problem which, unless properly handled, can easily become an asset to the dangerous criminal. Later in the program, we'll tell you how you can keep your war trophy from becoming an instrument of crime. But now, listen to the story of one returning serviceman and history that caused grave concern to the agents of your FBI. Tonight's FBI file opens in a large West Coast city. A veteran wearing his uniform stops in front of an apartment house, grins, throws his gear bag over the other shoulder, and quickly walks up the apartment steps and inside to the first door on the right. Just a minute. Who is it, please? Telegram for Frank Mason. Well, he won't be here until tomorrow, but... <gasps> Frank! Oh, Frank! Oh! Frank, put me down. Your leg. You shouldn't lift me like... like I used to. Oh, this leg's as good as new. The doctors and wives sent me back better than I left. Oh, Frank. Oh. Well, don't you ask me in? Oh, silly. Come on. It's a mess, though. We didn't expect you until... Hey, how'd you get here so fast? Oh, I caught a ride with a buddy. I... Oh, oh, man. They look the same? Frank, what are you doing? Get up. Oh, no. I told myself over there the first thing home I was going to kiss this old floor. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to me before the floor. Hey, well, where's Shrimp? Well, in his room. And you better not call him Shrimp. He's grown some. I'll call him. Oh, uh, no, wait a minute, sis. First, I, I want to show you some things. Here, just let me get this gear bag open. What have you got? Here. Right on top. There. <gasps> oh, Beautiful. Best come on a Tokyo could hey. offer. Oh, and here, here. Here's a parasol to go with it. Oh, Frank, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, okay, if I lay the stuff on the oh, table? Oh, sure, sure. All right. Oh, here we have an enemy sword. Yeah, they like to play King Arthur now and then. <laughs> and what's that? Oh, uh, enemy flag, or what's left of it. Well, how'd you get it? Uh, trade secret. Oh, here's a helmet. Thought maybe a shrimp could hang it up in his room. Frank, is, is that your gun? Well, it is now. It's an automatic. They call it a Tokarev. And they let you bring it home? 
Oh, well, hey, what's all the... Co- hey, shrimp! Hey, hey, you well, my gosh, you it's good to... Oh, I, can't, I can't believe it. Hey. Uh, the leg okay? Oh, you swell it. Boy, you've really shot up. How tall are you now? Six even. Oh, I can see why May warned me not to call you shrimp. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> let me heat the coffee, huh? It's already made. Yeah, yeah. How about some toast, too, huh? Coming right up, Sergeant. Uh-huh. Oh, gee. Gee, this is great. Hey, Frank, what's all this junk on the table? Oh, oh, just a few things I picked up over there. Oh, I brought you something, too. Yeah. Frank, it's a beaut. Oh, uh, that's a thirty caliber automatic. Yeah? Well, what do you know? Thanks a lot, man. Oh, now hold on, kid. I brought that home for myself. Here. This is for you. The tin hat? Oh, Frank, be a good Joe. Look, I always wanted a gun like this. Why? Oh, just for kicks, you know. Oh, come on, be a pal. Let me have it. Oh, no, kid. Come on, let's go eat. That you, Eddie? No, no, sis, it's me. Hey, on your second night home... I understood you soldiers like to tear up a town now and then. Uh, that can come later. You want to turn that off? Okay. Eddie isn't home yet? No. He should be along soon, though. Does he always stay out this late? Well, sometimes, yeah. What uh, kind of a job does he have? He's a salesman. What does he sell? Oh... A lot of things. One week he sold subscriptions to a big magazine, and, and then he... A few folks around the neighborhood tell me Eddie's mixed up with the wrong people. They say he seems to be spending a lot of money lately, but he hasn't done a lot of work. Oh. What is it, May? I don't know, Frank. Do you think he's in any kind of trouble? I don't know. But after you left, he started running around with older fellas, started staying out late... Maybe you can talk to him when he comes home. Sis, remember that automatic I brought home? Yeah? Yesterday morning, Eddie wanted me to give it to him. You didn't? No. Only this morning, I looked in my gear bag. The gun's missing. (laughs) Come on, kid, lift. That's a boy. Yeah, Mac, these crates must weigh a ton. Yeah, so we'll go wild if we can just sneak enough of these to the car. Yeah. Come on, lift a little higher. Hey. What was that? My gun. I knocked it out of my belt for the oh, crate. Sure. Now put the crate down. It's a souvenir gun. My brother brought it back from Korea. I don't care if it's an Eskimo gun. Only a sucker carries a gun in his belt. Oh, it's sort of big for my pockets. Not if you wear a coat, kid. Here, you can... Hey. What's wrong, Mac? Steps coming this way. Get down behind those crates. It's the watchman. I said get down, quick. Mac, I think... Quiet. Nobody's seen us. He'll get us. That's what you think. Here, you can put this back in your belt now. Mr. Forrester? Yes. I'm Special Agent Carter, and this is Agent Baxter. How do you do? Mr. Forrester? The body is over this way, gentlemen, by those crates. Any idea when the killing occurred, Mr. Forrester? Well, it couldn't have happened more than three hours ago. That's when the watchman last checked in. This is the first section he would patrol after his check-in. Well, then he must have surprised a thief or thieves attempting to steal government property here. Yes. When he failed to check in early this morning, we came out to find him. And we did. Like this. Hmm. Shot twice in the neck. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll go back up to the street and wait for the coroner. This is the big pier. Easy to lose your way. Thank you, Mr. Forrester. If we need you, we'll call you. Please do. Jack, look here. Yeah? Bullets apparently went 
clear through him. Mm. Let's try and locate him. Right. From the position he fell, I'd say he was standing right about here when he got it. Mm-hmm. That'll put the killer back by these crates. Yeah. Probably crouched low. He'd fire up. Bullets hit the watchman from an angle. Let's see. Uh, well, take a look at that post up there. Uh-huh. Looks like a fresh chip. Well, the watchman was standing in front of that. Help me move this ladder over. Okay. Okay, hold it steady. I'll right. go up. What about it, Jack? It's up here, all right. I'll get it out. Okay, kid, you're shot. Ah, nice. Now the five. Uh, <laughs> use a chalk. Eddie. Huh? Oh, hiya, Frank. Friend of yours, kid? Yes, my brother. Uh, Frank, this is Mac. Oh, pleased to meet you. Hi. Eddie, uh, suppose we walk home together. Who's going home? It's not even noon. Well, maybe your brother thinks you need an afternoon nap. Suppose you keep out of this. Come on, Eddie. Frank, I'm a big boy now. They let me in places like this without permission from my parents. I can buy a drink when I want to. So don't treat me like a kid, huh? You didn't come home last night. I stayed all night with Mac. Right? Yeah. Look, Frank, I'll be home for supper. We can talk then, huh? All right, Eddie. We'll talk then. Nice shot, Mac. Jack, did you check those crates at the pier for prints? Yes, but there wasn't a clear print on the whole lot. I was afraid of that. We took an inventory in the property on the pier. Nothing was missing. Well, chances are the killer was scared after he shot the watchman, gave up the idea of theft. What about any possible witnesses? I was only able to locate one person in the vicinity at the approximate time of the shooting. His name's Rayburn, unemployed dock worker. Do you hear the shots? No. Claims he was sleeping up the pier a little way. We're holding him for trespassing on government property, and local police are booking him for intoxication. Good. Oh, excuse me. Hmm? Carter speaking. Oh, yes, Turner. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Uh, good. Uh, thanks a lot. Report just came in from the lab, Jack. The bullet we recovered was a thirty caliber. It was fired from an automatic called a Tokarev. Tokarev? Well, that's what's being used in Korea. Mm-hmm. Could have been brought home by a Korea vet, or maybe it got here some other way. Well, I'll go over the list of returning veterans in this area in the last six months. Fine. I'll have a check made of the pawn shops. <laughs> She isn't here, Eddie. Oh. I sent her over to Mrs. Kovacs. What about dinner? It can wait. Well, I guess I'll wash up. Eddie. Yeah? Eddie, while I've been waiting for you, I read the evening paper. So? There's a story in it about a watchman who was killed during an attempted robbery of government property. A watchman was killed by a bullet fired from a Tokarev automatic. My gun's a Tokarev. Quite a coincidence. Maybe. The murder took place last night. You were gone last night. You think I killed that watchman? I'm not sure what I think. Okay. Look, I I didn't want to tell you, but I owed a guy 20 bucks. I just didn't have it, so I come up here, got your gun, and sold it for 25. What's inside your coat pocket? Huh? Oh, cigarettes. Cigarettes. Take a big pack to make a bulge like that, Eddie. You're a liar. Now look, Frank. Hand me the gun. Eddie, hand me that gun or I'll break your neck. Okay. Here's your gun. Eddie. Stay right where you are, hero. 
I've been on the wrong end of that gun before, kid. I took it away then. I can do it again. Stay back, Frank. Give me the gun. I'm warning you. Give it to me. Oh, oh my leg. Frank, I, I didn't mean to. I gotta get out of here. We will return in just a moment to tonight's dramatic case from the official files of your FBI. Right now, let me ask you this. What will you be doing when you're in your 60s? Will you be a burden on others, dependent on them even for pocket money? Or will you be living the life of Riley on a comfortable monthly income? Perhaps the experience of Mr. Herbert Groman, a member of the Equitable Society, can help you decide. Mr. Groman, how did Equitable solve your problem? Well, a few years ago, I suddenly realized that I was pushing 40. My wife and I began to worry about what we'd do when we were in our 60s. We didn't want to be a burden on our children. And then I tuned in this program one evening, and I happened to hear you talk about a mighty interesting retirement plan. Well, that must be the equitable independent 60s plan. That's it. Well, as you said, I picked up the phone and called the equitable representative. And I'm mighty glad I did. He showed us how easy it is to win freedom from money worries and job worries when we reach the 60s. He explained how the independent 60s plan would give us a handsome check every month, money that would let us live where we pleased and go where we pleased. And he showed me how my wife could enjoy all these advantages if something happened to me. To tell the truth, I was surprised how little it cost. Believe me, our equitable man turned out to be a friend in need. And let me say, a friend indeed. You see, all Equitable Society representatives are friendly and helpful. The Equitable Society selects its representatives not only on the basis of character and intelligence, but also on their attitude toward people. And they're specialists in life insurance planning, thoroughly trained men. They will show you how to prepare a plan that will give you the most for your life insurance dollar without putting a burden on your budget. So, if you don't know too much about life insurance, ask the man who does know. A helpful neighbor of yours, your local equitable representative. There's no obligation. Simply consult your local telephone directory for his name. You will find it listed in the yellow pages under the name Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> And now back to tonight's FBI file, The Wayward Brother. A trophy of any kind is to be admired. It is to be kept and displayed proudly by the winner of such a trophy. However, trophies or souvenirs from a battle area demand careful attention. Any weapon brought home should be taken to a firearms expert and carefully rendered harmless. Too often a small child will pick up a supposedly harmless souvenir weapon and cause the death of a playmate or his own death. And as in tonight's case, if these weapons fall into the wrong hands, they present a threat to the public and the law enforcement agencies protecting that public. So to you servicemen and women who have brought such trophies home, Remember that you took them while safeguarding the American public. Please don't jeopardize that public through carelessness. Tonight's FBI file continues a few minutes after the accidental shooting of Frank Mason. His sister May returned to the apartment. She quickly called a doctor, then made Frank as comfortable as possible. Frank. Oh, Frank. It's, it's okay, May. I'll drink some water. Doctor's on his way over. What happened? I... I shot myself. It was an accident. No, Frank, I saw Eddie run out as I came in. He did this, didn't he? He has your gun? Yeah. Oh. May's in trouble. We've got to help him. Help him? When the doctor comes, tell him I shot myself when I was cleaning my gun. If he asks where the gun is, tell him you threw it away, you... Didn't want it around here anymore. 
Forget that. Yes, but why? Honey, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what Eddie's done, but till we find out, we've got to protect him. Oh, okay. But I'm going to talk to Eddie. You, you know where he is? Well, I have an idea. He has a friend called Mac. I know where he lives. When you get that leg treated, I'm going to see him. run through the list of pawn shops. Anything? No, not one trace of a Takarev automatic. Someone must have brought that gun right back from Korea, and that someone either lost it or used it. Well, that ties in with what I have here, Jack. The police picked up a footprint impression at the pier that might have been made by the killer. Oh, they determined the exact size? Not yet, but their lab is working on that now. And while I was talking with the police, a doctor turned in his required report on a gunshot wound. The victim is named... Frank Mason, a Korean veteran. How was he shot? Mason told the doctor he was cleaning his gun and it accidentally went off. The doctor didn't believe him since the gun was nowhere around. Why, I still don't get our connection, Ralph. The bullet the doctor took out of Frank Mason was a thirty caliber. I just had a report on it. It was fired from the same gun that killed the pier watchman. I tell you, I shot myself. Mr. Mason, you also say you were sitting down when you were cleaning the gun. We've pointed out that it wouldn't be possible for the wound to be in the position it is if you'd been sitting. Look, I I guess I know if I shot myself or not. Perhaps. Now, Mr. Mason, how long have you owned a Russian Tokarev? What are you talking about? It was a Tokarev that fired the bullet into your leg, we know that. And that same gun killed a watchman last night. What? I still don't know what you're talking about. We're told you live here with your brother and sister, Mr. Mason. Where are they, please? I don't know. The doctor says your sister was here when he attended your wound. Yeah, yeah, she was, but she went out. Funny she should leave you alone when you can't get out of bed, sir. Well, she had something to do. Like get rid of a gun, a Takarev? I I told you I never heard of a Takarev. You were in Korea. Yeah, yeah, but... I'm sorry, Mr. Mason, we have a lot more questions to ask, and we have to get the answers to them. What is it? Your name's Mac, isn't it? That's right. I'm Eddie Mason's sister. Well, what do you want here at this hour? You woke me up. I'm looking for Eddie. I haven't seen him I tonight. don't believe you. I want to come in and look around. Miss Mason, you woke me up from a sound sleep. Now you want to keep me awake while you look around my apartment. Now, that isn't very nice, is it? Eddie was with you last night. That doesn't mean he's with me every night. You made Eddie go to that pier. You're the cause of all this trouble. Trouble? Just tell me where my brother is. If you don't, I'll come back here with the police. Oh. Well, come right in, Miss Mason. Now, let's review the facts, Mr. Mason. You told us you were sitting down. Well, well, maybe I wasn't. Maybe you didn't shoot yourself at all, is that it? Well, uh, yes. I mean... Oh, look, you're trying to mix me up. Might be for us, Ralph. I left this number. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, answer it. And now, let's get back to the gun. Yeah, Tom. Did your sister take it? No. No, she didn't. What about your brother? Oh, look, I I just ain't going to say anymore. All right, thanks. Mason, what size shoe do you wear? Huh? What size shoe? Eight and a half. And your brother, Eddie? Well, same size. Why do you want to know? A footprint was found on the pier that we feel sure was left there by the killer. The print came from a size 12 shoe. Well, then Eddie couldn't have done it. Done what? What? A... I... I didn't shoot myself. Eddie shot me in a fight, but, but it was accidental. Go on. Eddie has my gun. He had it last night. But he was also with a, a man named Mac. I met him at a pool room up the street. He and Eddie hang out there a lot. You know where this Mac lives? No. Well, my sister does. She went over there. Look, I... I'm sorry I held out on you. So are we. And I hope you didn't hold out too long. (laughs) 
Sure, I see Mac playing up here a lot, but I don't know where he lives. You know his real name? I'm afraid not. Mac don't make friends easy. Blows up all the time. Used to raise the roof of anyone so much as used his Q-stick. Q-stick? Yeah. He uses a big number 36 over in the rack. Won't let anyone else touch it. All right, all right. Oh, Eddie. There's been trouble, Mac. Come on in. Mac, the whole thing's blown up. My brother Frank found out. Uh-huh. I shot him, Mac. Did you kill him? No. I don't think so, anyway. Oh, uh, that's too bad. We already had one complication. Huh? Oh, over there in the corner. May. Had to tie her up and gag her. What for? Never mind what for. Let's get out of here. Oh, no. I'm letting her loose. Now, oh, now, wait a minute, kid. Take your hands off me, Mac. Your sister stays here. No, she don't. She isn't gonna be... Uh-huh. Hey, Donald... Kid, you still got that gun? Yeah, but you don't get it. Give me that gun. Come on, give it up to me. Break it up. Cover him, Jack. McDonald, we're special agents of the FBI. You're under arrest. You stupid punk, I'll kill you. You won't kill anyone else, McDonald. You have one life to pay for already. McDonald was turned over to state authorities and convicted for the murder of the watchman. He was sentenced to death. Eddie was also turned over to state authorities and was sentenced to a long term in prison. Special Agent Carter was able to locate the man called Mac in tonight's case when he learned Mac used a special cue in the pool room. Fingerprints were quickly found on the stick and they were checked and matched with a local police record on Sam McDonald. Luckily, the FBI was able to arrive at McDonald's residence before any more violence could occur. But it could have been a different matter. Frank Mason's reluctance to assist the FBI could have been responsible for injury to his sister and the escape of a dangerous criminal. Your FBI is working ceaselessly in its efforts to protect you, the American public. Given your cooperation, they can work more quickly in the solution of each case. Remember, the FBI has one main purpose, to protect within the limits of its jurisdiction each and every citizen in these United States. If you have children growing up, you want them to have a good education. Then consult the man who can help you solve your problem. He's a neighbor of yours, your local representative of the Equitable Society. You may be worried about owning your own home. You may be concerned about being dependent on someone in your old age. Life insurance is the best answer. And the man who knows the answer is your friendly, helpful, equitable representative. Pick up the phone and call him. Simply consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Kidnapping. Its title, The Evil Samaritan. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Dick Carr. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Carter was played by Carlton Young. Others in the cast were Tom Brown, George Ellis, Bill Johnstone, Lou Merrill, Paul Richards, and Gil Stratton, Jr. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Evil Samaritan on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood.